Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1435. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file, either the start file or finish file, so you could follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got to see how to export data from the data model into an Excel sheet. Now, I've already imported a bunch of tables, including a almost 8 million row data set over in the data model. And I want to get some of that data into my Excel spreadsheet so I can do some analysis. Now, of course, most of the time, the reason we have it in the data model is because doing analysis is easier there. But perhaps you want to do something in the spreadsheet that you can't do in the data model, or maybe you want to email the data to someone or something like that. Now we're going to see how to use this DAX code and the existing connections feature. And over on add-ins, I've already searched Google and downloaded and installed DAX Studio. If you don't have DAX Studio to help you with complex code, you got to download it. Now, two videos ago, we saw for the first time DAX Studio, and we'll get to see it again here in this video. Now let's go look at the data model over here in diagram view. Here's our fact table, and we have a calendar table, product, and country. These are all the dimension or lookup tables, the one side of a one-to-many relationship. We're going to try to extract all the columns from this table, but only the ones where the product is equal to quad, the year is equal to 2015, and the country code is equal to USA. Not only that, but when we export this table to our Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to have to add a lookup that can get retail price from D product. No problem. Let's close the data model. We're going to start off, and I'm going to drag this off to the side. And we're going to click in the cell where we want our data set to start when it gets exported. I'm going to go to Existing Connections. Here's our existing connections, and you go to Tables. These are all the tables from the data model. And all we have to do is double click one of them to get it to dump in our sheet. Now, if we double click F Transactions, that's the one we really want, but we only want some records. It won't work here because there's too many records. So here's a cool trick. Anytime you use existing connections, we actually have access to everything in the data model. So you just pick the smallest table to start, then you build your DAX code, and it pulls from whatever sections of the data model you want. So I'm going to double click this. Here's our import data. I'm going to click OK. So you can see that's just one lookup table or dimension table for product. Now, how do we get our DAX formula to transform this data set into the data set we want based on the data model? Well, we right click. And because this is an Excel table from the data model, when I go down to table, there's a special option, Edit DAX. Now, in two videos ago, I showed you how to select DAX and then type the code here. But it's pretty clumsy typing it here, and there's no prompts. And so we want to go use the much better tool, DAX Studio. Eventually, we're going to have to come and paste the code here to get it to work, to dump it down here. But I'm going to click Cancel here. And up in Add-ins, again, this is a free download. Click on DAX Studio. And since we have an Excel workbook, we open the Excel workbook first. And so it says, hey, Power Pivot Model. You can do this for your Power BI desktop. You just select this and then browse to that file and use DAX Studio. But I'm going to click Connect. And here it is. Now we're actually going to see a few cool things that we didn't see two videos ago about DAX Studio. DAX Studio does all sorts of things, including timing and finding bottlenecks and all sorts of things. We're simply using it to build our code because it's easier to build here, and then we'll go paste it over in Excel. Now we have to start off by typing the word evaluate. Now right off the bat, we can see the benefits of working over here. I can select from the dropdown. Now the function icon means function. And anytime there's a bit of code that's not a function but you can use here, 
There's nothing right there. It just looks blue. But I see Evaluate, so I hit Tab. Evaluate allows us to then build a table function and show it down here. Now watch this. We can hold Control and roll the wheel on our mouse to expand so we have a much larger view. Enter. Now we're going to use Calculate Table, Related and Add Columns. But before I do that, let's come over here because guess what? If I expand the tables to show all of the columns over here, I don't have to type them out over here. I can just come and double click, and they will get inserted. Now we're going to start with Calculate Table. Notice it says Calculate. That's the function we use to alter the filter context for a measure. Calculate Table is the function we can use to alter the filter context when we're delivering a table. So I'm going to hit Tab. Not only that, but if we were using Filter instead of Calculate Table, We'd be working on the F transaction table, and our conditions would have to be working on that 7 million row table. But calculate table, I can put the table I want, FT, and there it is, so I hit Tab. But now comma, now my conditions for filtering this table, I can work off the dimension or lookup tables from over here. And because they're much smaller, it almost certainly will calculate more quickly. Now, the first column we want to filter by is the product column. And we only want to see the quad product. So I'm going to come over to product and watch this. I can double click product, and it puts the table name and in square brackets the field names. Now I'm going to say equals in double quotes quad and double quotes. Now calculate table, just like calculate function, you can put multiple conditions, and it will work on an AND logical test. They'll all have to be true for the record to be extracted. Now comma. The next column, I want to come over to the D calendar and double click year. Now watch this. I'm going to come down here right before D and Enter. I'll come to the end, equal sign, and I want to see 2015. Now notice text, of course, is in double quotes. Numbers can be without double quotes, comma. And our third condition is I want to come over to the D country, country code, double click. I want to say, hey, which one of you is equal to USA in double quotes? Now I can close parentheses on this and calculate table right now will deliver only the records from F transaction that had the product quad in the year 2015 with the country code USA. If I come up and click Run, there's the table as it sits so far. Now, that's actually what we want, except for we need one more column. If I'm going to do analysis over there, I probably want quantity, revenue, discount, and the retail price. Now, I'm just going to add retail price. We could add the standard cost also. But let's add a column here. I'm going to come before Calculate and type ADD. And there it is, Add Columns, so Tab. Now I'm going to hit Enter. So now I have Add Columns. And Add Columns needs a table. Then you come to the end, comma. The second argument is, what's the name of the column? We're going to call this Price and double quote, comma. Now, actually, I'm going to click right before price, Enter. So we'll have the second and third argument for Add Columns on the same row. Now, Add Columns is an iterative function, meaning the first argument is a table. And we're allowed to iterate over the entire table as if we had a calculated column over in the data model. Now, the new calculated column, in essence, is going to be price. And guess what? We can put a function here that can look up the price just as if it was a calculated column. The function we use to look up a price is related. Now, of course, over in Excel, we'd look up a price using VLOOKUP. But related is our lookup function when there's a relationship. There's a relationship between F transactions and our product table. And because F transaction has a product, and later actually we're going to add an extra product here, so it's going to have one or more products, we can simply in related come over and in the D product double click retail price. And because there's a relationship between the two tables and each record in this table has a product, it will look up the correct retail price. Now I'm going to come to the end, close parentheses on related. 
close parentheses on Add Columns. Now we can come up and click Run. And look at that. There is the added price column. This looks just like a table over in our data model where we added a calculated column to look up price. Now I actually want to change the code from the code we showed at the beginning of the video. I want this query to look up the freestyle group of Boomerang products. And that group consists of the Quad Boomerang and the Carlota. Now notice, I said and, that's normal language. We'd say, go get the records for Quad and Carlota. But the logical test is actually an or logical test, because we have to ask the question of each record in the data set. So when I get to each record, I have to look at the product column and say, is this quad or is it Carlota? Now, we could use the or function, or we could come to the end. This is the second argument in Calculate. Come to the end space and use double vertical bar. That is the or operator in DAX. Now I do space, come over, double click product. Watch this. I'm going to come right after the first argument, after the comma, and Enter. Now we come for our second product column, and I say, hey, equal to in double quotes, Carlota in double quotes. So now the question is quad or Carlota. Now when I come up and click Run, there's our table. We can see some quads. If we were to scroll down, we could see some Carlotas, getting the correct price in both cases. So that'll be the code we need over in Excel to extract from the data model into an Excel sheet. Now we want to highlight this. And in past videos, I've showed you how to copy code and go to DAXformatter.com to format this. Well, guess what? In DAX Studio, the button is right there. So here's yet another use for DAX Studio. If I click that button, it instantly formats it. Now, this is a standardized format that people use for DAX. I don't particularly follow this format. But it is standardized, and it actually is quite helpful. Notice it says Add Columns, then indented. The first argument in Add Columns is the table that Calculate Table delivers. There's Calculate Table. All of its arguments are indented. Then the closing parentheses for Calculate is directly below Calculate Table function. Then indented the two arguments for Add Columns and the closing parentheses for Add Columns. Now we can highlight all of this, Control-C, go over to Excel, Alt-Tab, right-click, Table, Edit DAX. Now we want to select DAX, expand the lower right corner, highlight Product, and Control-V. There is our code didn't need to be quite that big. Now when I click OK, I am querying the data model and returning, click Control down arrow, 31,000 records. Some of them are quad. Some of them are Carlota. Now here's something really cool about this. We're pulling from the data model. We can actually add helper columns here, build pivot tables. We can even come back later and edit the code to add new columns. So let's try that. I'm going to come right here and type revenue, Enter. I'm not quite sure why the automatic table feature is not including that column. Maybe I have the wrong settings, but no problem. If I click inside the table, not only is there the table tools, there's also the query tab. I'm going to come over to Design, and there's the Resize Table. And we're going to change the last letter from I to J. Click OK. There's our revenue column. Now we can build a formula equals round function. I'm going to go over and get quantity times the price times in parentheses 1 minus the discount for revenue, close parentheses, comma 2, 
close parentheses, Enter. And there we go. All the way down, we have revenue. Now, let's add a column. We can actually go back and edit our query. Right click, down to Table, Edit DAX. Now, it would be easier to go over and do this in DAX Studio. But you know, you can write all your code straight here. I, a lot of times, just come here and write the code straight away. We want to add standard cost. So I'm going to highlight just that row, Control-C, come to the end, Enter, space, 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 Control-V. I'm going to double click price. Look at that. It didn't even include the double quotes. Call this cost. And then the only difference is we don't want the retail price we want. And we have to know how to spell the column, standard cost. Now, that means add columns. Yes, we can add more than one column with the Add Columns function. Remember, that's just like a helper column looking up standard cost. I'm going to click OK. Oh, and it's telling me that something's wrong with the cost, but that's not really the problem. Right click, Table. You can already see that a bad typer like me has trouble with something like this. It's much easier over in DAX Studio. I forgot the comma, which tells Add Columns there are two additional arguments. Now when I click OK, just like that, there's the cost. And we could continue adding columns. We can make pivot tables. We could even come over here, this is in Design, and click on Link. Look at that. It says, this will permanently delete the query definition from the sheet. Click OK. Now when I right click Table, look at that. Because this is no longer connected to the data model, we do not have the option. All right, that was a little bit about exporting data from the data model into an Excel sheet. We definitely saw the joys of creating a DAX query to get a table using DAX Studio. We saw Calculate Table, Add Columns, and the Related function. We also saw the OR operator. And of course, back when we started over on Data, we used existing connections and then right-click Table, Edit DAX. All right, that was a lot of fun with exporting data from the data model. We'll see you next video.